Hello and welcome back to my workshop for another of Harry's little jetty training videos. And in today's video, we're going to look at what you do if you have the likes of a biplane with four aileron servos. It's not a question that I get asked very often, but every couple of months, someone asks what they should do because they've got to this point in the basic settings of the model and there is not an option for zero flaps for ailerons and they're not quite sure how to proceed. So we're going to look at what you can do. There are two different ways of doing it, basically. They have slight advantages and disadvantages to each way. So we'll look at what you can do and why you might want to choose either of them. Uh, the big difference is that the first method I show you uh, means that all the servos on one side must do the same thing. So all the servos on the left must go the same way and all the servos on the right must go the same way. And in the second method, it would allow you to use, for instance, the butterfly option to make the servos go in opposite directions if you wanted to do the likes of a sort of crow braking, which some people want to do on more extreme biplanes, where the say the upper aileron would go up and the bottom aileron would go down. Um, so... That's basically the biggest difference. Um, but there are slight fine tuning advantages to doing it the second method, but it's a little bit more work. So, OK, let's dive in. Have a look. You, you've got to this stage and you think to yourself, oh, what am I going to choose? Because there is now no option without flaps. And you're saying, well, I haven't got flaps. Doesn't matter. Let's look at the simplest one first of all. Zero flaps, two ailerons. Pick that. And you're thinking straight away, hang on, I've got four ailerons and servos. Not a problem. Let's carry on. We'll accept those, uh, get to here, servo assignment. Now, this is where you can assign yet more ailerons. So, remember, Jetty's left to right rule. So, aileron one would be on the left wing. Aileron two would be on the right wing. Well, we can assign yet another channel to aileron one and another channel to aileron two. So now we've got two left wing aileron servos and two right wing aileron servos. Job done. Now, these two servos are going to react exactly the same way to any input that they get, for instance, from the aileron stick, uh, from a mixer, um, from rates, whatever. And these two on the right wing will react again exactly the same. You can, of course, set individual servo setups for them. So that one and that one can have different sub trims, different end points, that kind of thing. Um, but they're basically going to move the same direction, the same sort of amounts each. Now, you do not have to rearrange the servo assignment. You can leave it like this. The problem is going to come in uh, later on when you're setting up the model, especially perhaps in a few weeks or a few months if you want to make tweaks to it, and you're going through servo setup and you think, uh, which one was the top left wing? Was it that one or was it that one? So here I'm just going to make a suggestion about the way that you um, assign your servos. Why not make it look like you're standing behind the model with the aileron servos that set up that way. So if I was, for instance, to come here and make that aileron one and that aileron two and that aileron one and that aileron two, then it would look like, say you're standing behind the model, channel three would be the top left wing, channel five, bottom left wing, channel four, top right wing, channel six, bottom right wing. And you can just pop in here and do your other functions as you need them. And there you go. So later on in your programming or weeks or months from now, you need to tweak something in the servo setup menus. You can at least have a look in here and say, ah, that looks like the model. There's the left side. There's the right side. There's the top. There's the bottom. You don't have to do this. Uh, functionally, it makes no change to anything. It just makes it easier in your mind to keep track of what you're doing. And there we go. So we move on from there. Uh, now, you can uh, go into the servo setup and scroll through those. And there is aileron one, aileron 
2, the channel 4, so that's the right wing, back to aileron 1, channel 5, and aileron 2 again, channel 6. So at least from the servo assignment screen, you can remind yourself which one is where. Okay, so remember we've got two aileron 1s, there they are, and two aileron 2s, there they are. And you've got separate sub trims, travels and limits for each of them. Okay. What are the uh, further implications of using this method? Well, they come up in things like flight tuning. If, for instance, you were to go to aileron differential, you've got S1, which is both of your servo aileron ones on the left wing, and S2, which is both of the right wing aileron servos. So your differential is going to be applied exactly the same to both servos. You can't quite tweak each one for slightly differing mechanical setups. But then presumably, most of that really would have been taken account of in the servo setup uh, if you've done slight uh, endpoint adjustments there. But um, if you're desperate to get the last tenth of a degree of uh, tuning between the individual servos, you couldn't quite do it here because they're both servos on each side are going to react the same. And that applies all the way down. Um, you go into butterfly flaps, you could not do the butterfly method because you could turn the ailerons on either side upwards or downwards, but you couldn't make one on the left go up and one on the left go down because they're both going to react the same way. Okay. Uh, and in mixes, if we were to mix, say, from rudder to the ailerons, come down into advanced. In many cases, you would just set up your values and switch and curve. But if you come down, there is always this table here where you can fine, fine tune the mix output. And again, we've only got S1 and S2. In other words, all the left wing servos, all the right wing servos. Um, but in most cases, Actually, doing it this way will be fine, uh, unless you desperately want the crow breaking effect. Um, as I say, slight differences in mechanical setup would really be taken care of in the servo setup screens, where you do have all four servos that can be set individually. And then, unless you're, as I say, you're desperate to tune each servo to the last tenth of a degree of travel precision, it's not going to matter that both servos get adjusted under the one number. Okay. Right, what are the other options? Well, the other option, uh, basic properties, isn't it, is to go for a four aileron setup. There we are. There's the first of the four aileron setups. Now, this, for some reason, throws people uh, because they see two flaps. And they say, I don't want flaps. Yeah, fine. Take them out. Um, carry on. Press OK. OK, it's assigned flaps to P5. I'm going to leave that there because, frankly, it makes no difference to anything. I mean, maybe you do have a model that has four aileron servos and flaps. Uh, perhaps you've got a lovely Gloucester Gladiator. Yeah, OK. But if you haven't, it doesn't matter if it's there. Carry on. Um, we'll reassign the servos because we're just using the same memory again. And there we go. Now, uh, you've got flap 1 and flap 2 servos. Well, we just reassign those to the things we need. Uh, there's no point in trying to unassign the previous page, which was the functions assignment, because uh, the, the transmitter will just put the function for flaps back in. Because you've selected a two-flap model, it says, well, you must have a function. So it puts the flap function in. But if you remove the flap servos, the radio will not try and put those back in for you. Yeah, so don't get frustrated trying to remove the flap function because it'll appear to have removed it. And next time you look in that screen, it will have reappeared. Um, it doesn't matter that it's there. It makes no difference to anything. If you remove the servos, the radio will not try and force them back in. Now then, we've got, uh, there's aileron one two, three, and four. Now remember the jetty left to right rule. Low, the number one, 
is the furthest left aileron servo. Number four will be the furthest right aileron servo. So we're going to assign the servos left wing, one and two, right wing, three and four. But what about top and bottom? Well, frankly, the radio just doesn't care. It makes no difference to it. It, it doesn't have any differentiation for a vertical, just horizontally. So you could make aileron one the top left wing and aileron three the top right wing. Or you could make aileron one the top left wing and aileron four the top right wing. It just doesn't care as long as the, the sequencing is all on the left side and then goes to the right side. So uh, once again, let's just remind ourselves of how we want the model set up. We could do it this way. Remember, you don't have to do this. It's just for future reference for yourself. We can make that one the rudder. And there was no flap, so we can blank that one out. There we go. Uh, I know the rudder could go there, couldn't it? Let me blank that one out. So there we have our model. And the reason I've done this is purely to assist things in your own mind in future when you're trying to do things like the servo setup or any mixing butterfly, whatever. Uh, as I said, to the radio, it will make no difference if you make that one aileron four and that one aileron three. It really doesn't care about that. As long as your low numbers are all left wing and higher numbers are on the right wing. What difference does that make further on? Let's say OK to that. Move on to the fine tuning. Now, if we look in free mixes, for instance, and edit that. If we scroll down, remember the table only gave us S1 and S2. Now it gives us all the servos. So you can tweak the mix output exactly to suit you. Uh, in butterfly flaps now, if you want, because we've got individual outputs for each of the servos, you can put in this sort of crow breaking effect. Whereas, say, servo 1 would go up and servo 2 would go down. Uh, both on the same side of the model. What else can you do? Aileron differential, it allows you again the same. Remember, a few moments ago, all we had was S1 and S2. So there are the two ways of doing it and the, the differences between them. As I say, in most cases, just selecting the two aileron model and duplicating S1 and S2 will suffice. Um, the other way gives you a bit more control, but if you're doing things like the Euler and differential, etc., you've now got to adjust four servos instead of two servos, as it were. Um, so take your choice. Have fun with that.